Hey there, Matt Blake from Beatles Songwriting Academy here with a review of not one but three Paul McCartney biographies because I love you, yeah, yeah, yeah. McCartney by Christopher Sanford, weighing in at 403 pages. Fab, an intimate life of Paul McCartney by Howard Soonis. That one is 563 pages. And last but not least, Many Years From Now by Barry Miles, a whopping 619 pages. Let's kick off with the Christopher Sanford book. Positives, things I didn't know before I read this book. Not necessarily things that you want to learn. But uh, he covers what Paul's worth. Every year we have an update on his finances, his sleeping around, his drug use, his meanness to uh, band and family members, and generosity to charities and strangers. So that's what I learned from that book. Uh, negatives, the writer doesn't understand music at all. Uh, he thinks that it takes a quote, carpentry job to turn a right-handed guitar into a left-handed guitar. He classes Abbey Road's facilities as cheap four-track recorders, identifies some uh, songs like Love Me Do and Get Back as two-chord songs when they're three-chord songs. There's some bizarre turns of phrase in there. He references Paul's banjo eyes and calls Epstein a titan of couth. Uh, for me, one of the most annoying things was that he fictionalises different scenes in McCartney's life. So he'll say, Lennon said something as he pushed the glasses up his nose or something like that. Just little details that he is embellished, that he could never know that's what actually happened. And he just, those sort of things just make me distrust the author. Aside from that, it wasn't as bad as I'm making it out. It was a fairly okay biography. Fab by Howard Soonis. Uh, Soonis has written biographies of Bob Dylan, Charles Bukowski and the serial killer Fred West. I would definitely read another book by Soonis, probably not the serial killer one, but he is a great writer, good analysis of uh, McCartney's career and he understands music. He says, try though he might, Paul would never equal Dylan's consistent ability to write lyrics that are poetic and seem to contain original insight into what it is to be a human being. Dylan at his best is profound. McCartney at his best is a brilliant tunesmith. Now that's, that's not to take away from McCartney's gift, but that is really insightful. A few mistakes, he, he calls uh, someone's double neck guitar fashionable and it mixes Jeff and Tim Buckley up. But there's lots of insight that I didn't get from any of the books. For instance, he comes across as more generous in this book. He talks about the McCartney pension, where Paul pays for his relatives, his generosity to the other Beatles. Uh, setting up the anthology project was really to get George Harrison some money, and he made sure that Pete Best got his first ever royalties from being in the Beatles through that. The saga of losing his publishing uh, and why he failed to get it back at various points. He also makes the point that post-Beatles, McCartney's never been in financial difficulty. It talks about drug busts, uh, McCartney's relationship with his children and, uh, and what they've done. And then all sorts of little snippets like the fact that Harrison was the one that blocked the re-release of the Let It Be movie. It talks about how hard he is to work with from pr point of view of producers, co-writers, film people, publicists. Just to give you some idea of the depth of research, every Beatles book speaks about the disastrous tour in the Philippines, but Soonis actually interviewed Imelda Marcos. <laughs> so he interviewed Denny Lane rather than just uh, rehashing interviews as Sanford did. Uh, he spoke to Glyn Johns, he spoke to Ravi Shankar. So you can't argue with research like that. Last but not least, Many Years From Now by Barry Miles. Is it by Barry Miles? Some people have called this a Paul McCartney autobiography. Fact of the matter is that Paul got to vet the manuscript entirely and get 75% of the royalties. Canny businessman. That's why he's never been uh, short of a few bob. Sanford calls this book comprehensive. Soonis calls this book very good. And the Rough Guide to the Beatles says, for all its faults, 
it remains an essential Beatles book. Why does it remain essential? Well, Beatles Songwriting Academy, we're all about the songwriting here. I want to know how they did it. That's the whole reason for this website. And the fact of the matter is that when the Beatles wrote most of their hit songs, there was only two people present, John Lennon and Paul McCartney. John Lennon is not going to write any more than he already has written and has spoken about, and that's gathered in several books of interviews. But this is the only book that you will ever get that has the inside scoop on how they wrote the songs. So for that alone, it is invaluable. Now, a lot of people have an issue with this book because they say it's revisionist and uh, Paul's just putting his own side across. And I would say, of course he is. But rather than going, oh, well, it won't be impartial, it won't be balanced, therefore I'm going to ignore it. What you do is you ask yourself, what has he chosen to put in? What has he chosen to major on? What has he chosen to to brush under the carpet. And that in itself teaches you a lot about the man. So what we find is that Paul is an incredibly talented but insecure man. And what he is most insecure about is that John Lennon should have a disproportionate regard in the public's eye and various things. So Paul wants it to be known that he was the working class one. And he's got a point because he was. And Lennon was raised in a middle class house by a rich auntie. He wants people to know that he was the true avant-garde spirit in the Beatles, uh, or at least the earliest adopter. He was also an artist and a painter, and he was a film director, and there's a certain amount of hubris about the influence that Magical Mystery Tour had on Steven Spielberg, and how much Jimi Hendrix would have been honoured to play Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club live and how James Jameson would have been checking out Paul McCartney's bass lines just as much as McCartney was checking out Jameson's. So it gives you a portrait, probably the truest portrait, if you just have eyes to see. But what it also gives you is the genesis of song after song after song. And a, a large percentage of this book is taken up with the songwriting, which is why I like it so much. I've read it three times, by the way. So you get to know where was it written, how was it written, uh, who wrote which bit. It says at the beginning that Paul only differed from Lennon's accounts in two songs, which is not true. If you read the book, you find more than that. But to its credit, it says Paul said he wrote this, but John disagreed and said this. So, for instance, on Ticket to Ride, John said all Paul did was tell Ringo how to play the drums. Paul disputes that, says he did more. But it's there. It's there in the book. And the only negatives, really is that because the author Barry Miles was involved with Paul in the 60s running a bookshop for Paul, just at one point it almost becomes Barry Miles' autobiography. And to be honest, that gets really boring for about 30 or 40 pages in the middle. So skip that bit, uh, but it's a great book. Just to look at how these things stack up, both of these books, exactly 11% covering pre-Beatles, 36% on the Beatles, and then 52% on McCartney's career post-Beatles. This one actually goes further. That's the more up-to-date one. Many years from now, however, is 14% on the upbringing and the pre-Beatles. 78% is about the Beatles, and then there's just a small chapter, 6% post-Beatles. This is a book about Paul McCartney, the Beatle, not Paul McCartney, the man. The legend. <laughs> so, overall, okay? It's okay. Brilliant. It's a brilliant overview. But, as a songwriter, you must buy this book and learn from one of the greats. Peace out. Head over to Beatles Songwriting Academy for posts about songs. Yeah, I don't just review books, gosh darn it. I actually analyze the songs, pull them apart, provide songwriting lessons that you can take away and write your own classics. We love you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shame about your moustache. Your fringe is pretty rubbish too.